Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Ayana Janae, back again, and I am happy to be back. Um, This week's episode, we are talking about something that is kind of controversial. Well, I won't say controversial. It just depends on who you're talking to, as with anything. Um... But it is something that's considered to be a bit taboo. Everybody has their thoughts and opinions on it. Um, And what I'm talking about is, if you can't tell by the title, period sex. Um, Period sex is a bit of an interesting topic um, for me, especially as a spiritualist um, or an occultist or whatever you refer to me as, witch, whatever. Um... Because I understand it to a in a deeper perspective from a deeper perspective, um, which I'm going to talk about uh, throughout the episode. But um, what I will say is that it's important to keep your mind open about period sex, um, and it's important to understand that. Um, menstruation is, menstruation is a natural, a very, very natural, um, bodily function for those people who are born with a vagina and, um, who still live with their vaginas and their wombs, their uteruses. Um, it's very common. It's very normal. Um, and it's not something that is this this disgusting thing. And most people who who view it as something disgusting, I won't even say most people. I won't generalize that way because um, there are women who tend to, or the people who have their vaginas or their wombs, the people who menstruate tend to view it as something that's disgusting. And um, their partners, or there are people without wounds with who don't menstruate who view it as something that is disgusting and I am here to tell you it is not disgusting at all again it is a very natural body bodily function and it's very necessary it's part of our excretory system um for those who do menstruate it's part of our excretory system it's necessary for us to release um whatever we may have taken in for that month or those 28, 30, up to 45 days, um, depending on how your cycle flows. Um, and without it, uh, it, it, there would be a lot of negative pent up energy within our bodies that we would not know how to process without it. We, there would be a lot of negativity or negative energy from foods that we eat that we would not properly process um and so it's very important for our reproductive systems to undergo that cleansing process so that's just my little spiel before i go any further to just say loud and clear periods menstrual cycles menstruation whatever you refer to it as it's not gross it's not disgusting it's very natural it's also a very beautiful thing because it reminds you of the life the life force that exists within your womb blood 
is part of life for like blood is very representative of your life force because it is through your blood that you live just as breath just like breath it is through your breath that you live and it's important for your blood to be purified a particular way and cleansed a particular way and part of menstruation is the process of cleansing blood it is cleansing the blood of it's it's happening through blood but it's the cleansing of blood and the only way to cleanse that blood in this case is to menstruate um i won't say that's the only way to cleanse blood because there are plenty of herbs that you can take to cleanse your blood um and if you take those herbs you will find that if you um if that those who menstruate who take these particular herbs that I'm talking about um, may find that their their bleeding or their cleansing process or their menstruation is shortened because it's there, there's not there's not that extra pressure there um, that's necessary to prolong cleansing because menstrual cycles typically tend to last well it really just depends on the person it depends on um, what what their diet is like how they take care of themselves um the energies that they take in in all forms um so at least uh cycles are about at least three days at most uh they can be about 10 days but again that also depends on what is currently taking place in your system i remember a time where i had um i had just got on the birth control shot, uh, the, what is it, uh, Depo Provera. I had just gotten on that, and I, I started the shot the same day that one of my menstrual cycles started, and so, or the same day that I started menstruating for that particular month, and I bled the entire, so you have the shot for three months, and you have to, and then you have to go get another shot. Um, I bled the entire three months and all that meant, all I took that as, or in hindsight, how I take that. Cause at first I couldn't really understand it. I was like, why am I bleeding so much? This, this makes no sense. Um, but in hindsight, how I view that is my body was trying to cleanse itself of that, that medicine that had been running, th- that had been pushed into my veins um because it it just didn't need to be there um and that's not necessarily the view that we get as it pertains to birth control i'm getting very off topic uh because somehow we ended up on birth control but um it it relates still um because somehow um we aren't told that that these medicines these birth control methods um can Ha, are are inserting toxins into our bodies causing our um and that's part of why our our um our menstruation may shift as it does we may find that it gets irregular um and it's because those toxins are throwing off our hormones or that we may find that our cycles are lasting longer than normal and it's because our body feels the need to cleanse more and it's working overtime at this point to cleanse our bodies of the toxin that has just been placed or pushed into us um i'm not on it anymore I'm on the, um, I have, I have an IUD now, um, and my cycle is shorter, but my cycle is also shorter because I eat a mostly plant-based diet. And I say mostly plant-based because I do consume seafood. Um, other than that though, plant-based. Um, but because of my diet, um, I, I have found that my period is shorter. Um, and, and that's because, again, it has less to cleanse out of my system. It still has a good bit. Like, I think my cycle shortened by maybe two or three days. Um, so I originally used to have a seven day long cycle and now I have like a four or five day long cycle. Um, and it's got, again, it's gotten even shorter because I've started taking those, those herbs that purify the blood. Um, and those herbs include like burdock root. Um, and then I've taken, I've started taking, um, these 
vitamins that also have um, that have sea moss in them, and sea moss is good for cleansing as well. So um, the purpose again of the period is not to be this gross thing; it is to cleanse the body um, and to cleanse it of negative energy. Because you also may find that during times when you are um, you've taken in a lot of negative energy or you may be somewhat angry or something like that you may find that your period is a bit heavier um and that is again because your body is trying to do what it needs to do to process and work out all of that negative energy and so um if you if you have not and not just that because you can be angry on your period and then you notice it's just ra- one day where it's just randomly heavy and that's why because you have added it's it's like you've added in, I won't say added insult to injury but like you've you've kind of like you've increased um, its workload essentially so it is cleansing the purpose of our menstruation is to cleanse it's not a gross thing it's not bad at all and I just spent 10 minutes talking about how periods are not gross <laughs> but still it's it, it needs to be said because we we receive we receive so much fallacy um, as it pertains to menstruation and periods and things of that nature so I really wanted to emphasize one more time periods are not gross they're not disgusting they are beneficial they are necessary um that is our way of cleansing and excreting um so, well one of our ways of cleansing i won't say our main way but one of the ways that we cleanse especially the cleansing of our wombs um because a lot of energy that is taken in um, can end up stored in the womb. And so it's very necessary for our wombs to remain healthy, for that blood to be stored, um, bl- not stored, to be released, <laughs> um, released and let go. You know, those are the same words. <laughs> that was a very redundant sentence, but it's very necessary <laughs> for periods to exist. And they're very beautiful. And if you get in tune with them, make friends with them, you would understand that they are working for you, not against you. And if you want to better understand, I I, I think it would be very beneficial to better understand your period, to take the time to understand what foods do what to your body and make you maybe menstruate heavier or lighter. What um, what energy, what emotions contribute um what and also how how your diet and not just your your oral consumption but your mental consumption uh your visual consumption your energetic consumption it's very i think it's very beneficial to see how those things affect your body in general but also especially how they affect you in this period of cleansing um and you may find that if you take in certain energies, you feel more pain, you hurt more. That's where the cramping and the headaches and the body aches come in because your body is working overtime to process that particular energy, whatever that energy may have been. So that's all I have for that. <laughs> Just a quick little spiel, a 12 minute spiel on periods. Um, so we're going to take a really quick break and then we're going to jump right into the benefits of period sex. Be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships.
All right, and we are back. Um, before we went to break, I talked about <laughs> periods for a very long time. And I talked about the importance of them, why they were beneficial, um, all of that. And just, just mainly for the emphasis of they're not gross. To em- Mainly to emphasize that they are not gross, they are not disgusting, they are not these evil things. They are very necessary. They are very beneficial to our well-being. So now we are going to talk about how to operate sexually. Um, Or first, no, that's later. We're going to talk about the benefits of operating sexually during um, that time, during menstruation. Um, So to get started, um, the very first thing is having sex on your period can help with your menstrual cramps. And this is because during an orgasm, your pelvic muscles will contract and release, allowing for like the alleviation of pelvic pain felt from menstrual cramps. Um, so when you when you're having sex in short um, or not even having sex, masturbating as well is is good, too. Um, what happens once you orgasm is your your. Um, think about when you get a kink in your neck. Um, you find that when you move it, you work it out a bit, it works itself out. Same thing, same concept. If you have this cramp, this pelvic pain, it's the, the orgasm is um, allowing for your pelvis to move and therefore it is essentially working that pain out. Um... And then also on top of that, the endorphins that are released. So it's not just helping with um, menstrual with menstrual cramps, but it's also um, helping. Well, menstrual cramps can be felt not just in the pelvic area. I'll say they can also be felt in the hips, thighs, um, even the butt, lower back. Um, But there are other pains other body aches associated with menstruation as well and because of the endorphins that are released during orgasm um orgasm is also beneficial for those other pains as well so if you get headaches um if you have random sinus aches listen periods affect us in the weirdest ways um, I remember I've had cramps so bad that they went down to my legs and I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? Um, my worst experience with cramps had to be my, I was, I was 10 and so I wasn't having sex then and I, I knew nothing of this information. I didn't know what would make it feel good. I just knew I needed medicine <laughs> and, um, I was, I was in, I was 10, I was in Kin- not kindergarten goodness I was in fifth grade and um <laughs> the fives confused me <laughs> I was in fifth grade and I was I just remember being in class one day and it was my I was fairly new to the period game um because so it had to be like my second period um because I, my, I started in fifth grade and so it I was new I didn't know that eating certain foods would upset my cramps and I had ate some Skittles that day some sour Skittles I used to love them and which is I I just find it so funny how taste buds change over time because now I don't even like candy like that but anyway I digress um I had some sour Skittles and it was like all hell broke loose in my uterus and I could not move I did nothing in class that day, um, and which which was fine because we weren't really doing anything in class that day anyway. Um, but I just remember like I had a dentist appointment that day anyway, so my mom was coming to get me early, and I was like, "You gonna have to come earlier than that. I got to go. <laughs> it's time to leave." Um, and but but as but at ten I was masturbating, and so what I will say is that I wish I had known how that could and and, and yes masturbation is a sexual act but it's not even just about 
sex with masturbation it's important to note the general pleasure in it think about the things that are not sexual that you get pleasure from the general pleasure of the thing is what I wish I had considered and wish, what I wish I had known and and I had I wish that I had known cuz ultimately pleasure is medicine general pleasure is medicine because your body releases endorphins every time it experiences pleasure regardless of what the pleasure is and so what I wish I knew at 10 years old is that my cramps could be relieved by me just masturbating But I'm 23 now, (laughs) and I know that now, (laughs) but at 10 years old, I really wish I had known. Um, So, that is why, um, that's that's my experience with, uh, or what I wish I had known about um, experiencing orgasm in menstruation, and the connection with the two, and menstrual cramps, and all of that. Um... And then also on top of pain relief, these endorphins also boost your mood. Um, And this is mainly for those who tend to be more irritable when they're menstruating. Um, You know, quote unquote PMS. Um, Which, I'll say PMS does not necessarily have to exist. Because it's ultimately just a a hormonal imbalance. And a lot of hormonal imbalances are created environmentally. And, um... You you create the environment. You set the environment in your body to to thrive or to not thrive. And so, PMS hormonal imbalances they're a horm- they're an an environmental issue, and it's based on the energy taken in in your environment around you, and also the environment you're creating within your body. Um, the environment that you're creating with the foods that you eat um so just keep that in mind but uh yeah for those who tend to be more irritable or fatigued um during menstruation uh just having you a quick little orgasm whether with a partner or um masturbating alone you know whichever i recommend either or um you you'll find that your mood is boosted you'll have you're more happy um and you have a bit more energy and it's because of those endorphins that are released during orgasm so then the next benefits of period sex is extra lubrication of course that extra that that blood provides extra lubrication um I recall having sex on my period and I didn't know. But I knew, like, something feels different. And it was that extra lubrication. Um, I found out later, but it was, in fact, that extra lubrication. So I could attest to that. Um, and, I mean, it just it just seems like common sense. Like, well, duh, there's, there's just there's something extra there. So, of course, there's extra lubrication. Um this is perfect for suggesting shower sex so shower sex typically uh i haven't i've never had shower sex but from what i've heard water is not lubricant (laughs) water is not lubricant and so when you're having sex the water can actually add friction and it makes it it can make it a, a very unpleasant experience Well, if you have sex on your period in the shower, there's that extra lubricant from the blood. And so it makes it more difficult for that water to cause friction. So it improves the experience of shower sex. So just something to note, you know, ladies, if you want to or if you're just a person who uh, menstruates, you know, you get a sneak that in there with your partner um let's see what else do we have here also the endorphins mentioned earlier and i'm looking i say what we have here is because i'm looking at my notes i also i always want to make sure i'm i'm giving all of the information and not forgetting anything so i do take notes um you may have heard a page or two turn in previous episodes 
but um also the endorphins that I mentioned um um as far as like improving your mood and uh alleviating pain and things of that nature they also reduce stress and so <sighs> because of the hormonal imbalance that can be caused um during menstruation or that can occur during menstruation um it can affect our nervous systems in a particular way and when our nervous systems are affected it is it, it the word for that is stress it and that is like our fight or flight um or fight flight or freeze hormones being triggered um and it's just because our it, it's like our we just feel distressed. <laughs> we really just feel distressed. We want to be held and we want to do all these other things. It's stress. Um, but the endorphins released during orgasm can also re- relieve that stress. As you probably know, you know, I'm, sh- I'm sure you would know, um, having sex is a release. Orgasm is a release. So think about how relaxed you feel after you have that release, after you've been stressed out and things of that nature. And if you masturbate and you orgasm, you feel so much better. You feel less stressed. Same thing. Of course, you relieve the stress. So also something to keep in mind. The next thing uh, that is a benefit is that the hormone prolactin is also released during orgasm. And what prolactin does is it prepares the body for sleep and promotes more restorative rest. So um, that's part of why, like, after you orgasm, it's like, oh, my God, I'm just, I feel so. And you, after you orgasm and you have sex or you fall, have sex or you fall asleep, um, after you orgasm and you fall asleep, you wake up and you're like, oh, I feel so refreshed. That's why, because that prolactin is like it's 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 doing what it's what it needs to do it's providing you more restorative more restorative sleep um and it's it's making you fall asleep is making you fall asleep um which is ultimately regulating your sleep cycles it, it it's very possible if you if you masturbate regularly regularly you may find that you have more um regulated sleep cycles and sleep patterns It's also great if you notice, um, period sex is also great. If you notice that you're a bit more aroused, um, while you're menstruating or that your libido is a bit higher, um, period sex is great. You could take it, you could take great advantage of that. Um, and that's really because you're, um, it's just a shift in your hormones, really. And it's an increase in testosterone as well. Um, And with that increase in testosterone, um, your genitals tend to feel more sensitive. Sensations are heightened and not just the sensation of the orgasm, but the sensation of the experience in general. Um, Whether masturbating or uh, whether solo masturbating or interacting with a partner, whatever the case may be. um, that, That increased testosterone is providing extra sensation and it's heightening not only again the the orgasm but the experience and the orgasms tend to be more intense and longer um i can attest to that that's all i'll say um and but most times um i don't have period sex often because again like that time that i mentioned was an accident (laughs) um but i do masturbate and it's because i've researched and have grown to understand the medicinal properties of it so just keep in mind that the orgasm will be stronger um another benefit is that it creates a deeper a deeper level of intimacy with your partner um period sex does and that's for obvious reasons like it's like uh, I feel so free with you. I feel free enough to just have sex on my period. Or I want to have sex with you on your period. Because I just... It's just it's just like a connection. It, it's, it's just like we're that connected. Like, I don't mind. It's cool. I want all of you as you are. Um, but it also erases... The, the other part of that connection is that 
it takes away the uh my partner thinks I'm gross or periods are gross. I'm not having sex with my partner or her period cuz it's gross. It takes away um that that disdain or that disgust um or that what is the word um that subconscious self that the self consciousness of it N- not subconscious self conscious <laughs> it it makes your partner feel so if you're having sex with your partner and they're the one that's menstruating it'll make them feel less self conscious about their menstruation and that will kind of deepen the bond between you two but a more spiritual or woo woo way to look at this is uh Blood is life force, again, as I mentioned earlier. And because blood is life force, blood is used in a lot of witchcraft or in a lot of spells to um, kind of bind someone to another person. Um, So you have to be careful when having period sex if you so choose to do so. Because uh, you may be uh, tying yourself to them energetically and you don't even know it. Um, because you're not considering that aspect of it, but it is possible to like that. That's part of sex magic. I think I mentioned it in, um, the sex magic episode, but that is part of sex magic. Uh, you can, a a ritual is to have sex with your partner while on your period, um, with the intent to bind them to yourself or to bind, bind the two of you together. Um, and that is considered to be blood magic as well. So be careful when doing that. Um, and and that's part of why, like, if you don't, if you, if that makes you a little bit worried and you still want to have period sex, uh, use a condom because that's the one way that there because there's a barrier um the blood is not getting directly on the person and also the blood is not mixing with the semen as it would if you were um having sex raw and it's not one it's not mixing in with their secretions and things of that nature as it would if the, if you all were having unprotected sex so um also Period sex can shorten your period. Um, and this is just because the contracting of your uterus can speed up the blood expulsion process. So our, our uteruses tend to just push the blood out at a particular rate. Um, and which is also part of the cramps. Um, sometimes the cramps are maybe as intense as they are because of the amount of blood coming out. And how much the uterus also has to work in order to expel. Um, But if you are having sex and um, or you you have an orgasm or whatever, um, that contraction that takes place during um, intercourse, um, it depends. That depends on how deep the penetration is and things of that nature. Um, if penetration is even involved, um, but it can put, cause that blood to push out more, um, and push out at a faster rate and you'll find that your period is shortened. So those are the benefits. So of course, with benefits, there are cons, but we're going to take a break before we talk about those. So we'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
All right, so in the last segment, we talked about the benefits of period sex. And some of those benefits included the alleviation of pain, the shortening of periods, and deeper connection with your partner. Now to the cons. Con number one, a deeper connection to your partner. And that is because of what I mentioned um, in the last segment, sex magic, blood magic. You may, if you have period sex with somebody that you don't really see yourself with uh, for the rest of your life, or you don't really see yourself having that deep of a connection with, you may find that you are tied to them in a way that is inescapable. It's like you cannot get away from this person. Um, It's like you like them and you don't want to. Um... So, again, be careful with that. Another con is the mess. Of course. Um, That's one thing that worries a lot of people. You know, the mess that's made. And what I will say about that is it's just important to pay attention to the um, positions. Um, Because, and that's another con. Positions are limited. So, you have to be mindful of the positions and how gravity works with those positions. So, if you are the menstruator and you are on top, just be mindful of how the blood is going to rush downward because of how gravity operates. Um, And more often than not, it's best to do like side positions, um positions like doggy style and also missionary positions just because gravity (laughs) um so but also that avoids mess being mindful of positions and also just put a towel down another con is the odor and with odor that really depends on your diet um it because everybody doesn't have a very strong odor and that's why it's it's more bearable for people to have um period sex than others and it's just because of what their diet what their diet is like and again diet is not just what you orally put into your mouth it is what you are taking in mentally spiritually emotionally um the energies around you so your diet can have a huge effect on the odor that may or may not be present with your menstruation. Um, and then with that in mind, that the odor can also be um, a con- another con, I'll say, is the odor can affect um, if you are interested in um oral sex the odor can deter your partner from having oral sex with you um this just made me think about something else um so there's a scripture in the bible i don't know the exact scripture but i know it's in there somewhere about a woman being unclean during her period um and how you should not lay with a woman when she is on her period because she is unclean and it will then make you unclean. I don't really think that that is the real purpose for that being in there. I think that the purpose for that being in there is because they knew that that is a form of blood magic and it can tie you to that person. And, and that's just because of the... <laughs> The patriarchy that the Bible is, the the patriarchal connotation that the Bible is written in, um, I think that it was to strip women of that knowledge, of that power, and to just say, no, they're just unclean. They're just unclean. They don't need to be touched right now. Um, But I, I, I think. That, that, those are my thoughts. I'm, I'm going to leave that there. Um, anyway, another con is that period sex can increase the risk of contracting STDs and STIs. And that is because blood. Which, again, to avoid that, use condoms. Um, 
And again, using condoms for those who are worried about getting blood on their own genitals um, from having sex with someone who is menstruating. Use a condom to avoid that that quote unquote mess um, and to also avoid contracting STDs and STIs. Safe sex always. Safe sex always. I don't want to tell you what to do, but safe sex always. Unless, I mean, again, it just depends on the person. It just depends on the person. Um, Because I'm no saint. I can't say that I have safe sex 100% of the time. Um, But it is important. And that's also because of the the partnership that I have um, when I am in partnership with people. But I can also, and for me, it's also just a reading of energy. And so that's a very fly by the seat of your pants type of thing. Um, but there are people that I, if I can read the energy and I know it's a, it's an energy that like, I need to use a condom with this person. We're going to use a condom. And I have more of those experiences, or I've had more of those experiences than I've had with people that have been like, "Mm, we don't have to use a condom. So, safe sex always. Um, So, yes. Um, Depending on your preference, uh, you can use... um, I said that oral sex is out of the question... And I, I, I'm saying again, like, it just depends on your preference. And also understanding that, um, odors are not the same for everybody. But also, um, clitoral stimulation is very much so a thing. So, even though, you know, um, well, and also if this is probably only best for people who use tampons and menstrual cups and things of that nature because everybody doesn't feel comfortable using those using those um tools um because some people probably just still use pads or um washable pads or reusable pads things of that nature so that really just depends on the person as far as oral sex being out of the question um but it is still something to keep in mind when considering period sex you may not receive oral because your partner's not into it or you're not into it or whatever the case may be. So now we're going to talk about some ways that you can kind of combat. Will I say combat? No, some ways you can better enjoy period sex if you so choose to do it. But before we get there, we're going to take another break. Be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The DSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. All right, so we've talked about periods and what they are and their importance. We've talked about pros. We've talked about the cons of period sex. And now we're going to talk about methods to have effective, good, mess-free period sex. First one, I mentioned it before, 
lay a towel down. This is again just to avoid any mess that may occur because maybe you do want to do a position where the person is on top. That's fine. Just lay a towel down <laughs> to avoid that mess. Next thing, wear a tampon or a menstrual cup and focus solely on clitoral stimulation. Or not just clitoral stimulation, but also stimulation of the perineum or anal stimulation. There are ways around it. I have had, now I have had period sex like when I knew. However, um, I had a tampon in and we still um, did anal instead. Um, which I didn't mind, um, because it's all still sex. And I was more so just caring about the connection that I had with the person, uh, and just, and just being able to experience the person. Um, but if that's not your steez, um, you don't have to do anal, um, or even perineum play. But, uh... I, I think it, it would be beneficial to do clitoral stimulation um, in cases like that, especially uh, if you're wearing a tampon or a menstrual cup because the, it, the, the mess um, is less likely if existent at all. Um, and it's just, it, it does seem, it's like, it's a bit awkward because, and this is why I recommend it best with a menstrual cup. Because you can't really see it. But if, like, you're having sex and, like, you know that string is there with that tampon, it just feels so weird and so awkward. But again, it's up to you. It's your preference. It's your life. Um, I recommend doing it with a menstrual cup because I have made the mistake of doing it with a tampon and that, sh that string just took me out of it it made it I, I was in my head the whole time and I was like I can't do this <laughs> I went through with it but I was like I, the string is there and I know it's there <laughs> um but hey you live and you learn I know now to use a menstrual cup um it's and menstrual cups are actually like my preferred go-to um when I'm on my cycle anyway they're more sustainable they last longer. You can use a menstrual cup for up to a year. Um, of course, make sure you clean it. Um, but yeah, you can use it. You can reuse it for up to a year and then just switch it out. It's more cost effective. All of that. So, that's just my spiel. My take on menstrual cups. But anyway, back to these methods. Um, try incorporating sex toys. This goes back to the... Uh, well. Not all sex toys focus solely on clitoral stimulation. Um, if you're using a vibrator, it's great for clitoral stimulation. Now, if you choose to use a... Um, even if you do use a vibrator, but you want to use it for penetration, or you uh, want to use other um, penetrative uh, objects, um, if you're still worried about mess, just put a condom on it and clean it, of course. And Same things, put a towel down, things like that. Um, there are always right, ways around it, and sex does not have to be one particular thing, one particular experience. Sex does not have to solely be penetration. Again, I say sex does not have to solely be penetration. Sex can be, sex in general to me is the exploring of my partner's body and their sexual essence. And it doesn't have to just be penetration. Just oral sex is sex. Just anal sex is sex. Just clitoral stimulation with my partner is sex. Just me stroking my partner's penis or rubbing my partner's clitoris is sex. Because it is me enjoying and embracing the sexual essence and also overall essence of my partner in that moment. Um, also, if you're worried about a uh, mess... Again, I say try shower sex. It'll if you, especially if you've never had shower sex, it'll give you an excuse to try something different with your partner, and even that can enhance the relationship because you've had this new experience with your partner. Especially if you're having period sex for the first time, so you've had two in one new experiences with your partner. Um, to avoid cleanup, also or not avoid cleanup, avoid mess. 
also have baby wipes in the vicinity. So say you want to go rounds. Um, for those who don't know what rounds are, uh, you want to go more than once. Uh, but you don't want to, like, stop, go clean up, come back, d do all that. Uh, have baby wipes in the vicinity so that if there is a mess, um, you can just have those ready and waiting. And uh, you just do a little wipe up real quick and be like, all right, let's get back to it. Um, and then um, another way you can play it is if you do, if there is a mess. Um, if there is, it, I don't think it'll be a whole lot. It's not going to be like a bloodbath or anything like that but if there is a mess how you can spin that on his head is you can say well babe let's take a sensual shower together and, and y'all just clean each other up and you make it all romantic and all of those things you know be, be creative be creative there are ways to do these things and it still be a pleasurable experience for both parties you just have to think outside of your box pun intended so once again thank you for tuning in to the gsmc sex podcast brought to you by the gsmc podcast network i am your host ayana janae and i look forward to spending more time with you all later this week and i thank you once again bye You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast. <laughs>